We have seen in the previous videos how to test the difference of means between two samples, but what happens when we have three or more samples? Then we must learn a new technique, the analysis of variance test, also known as the ANOVA technique. One thing that is slightly confusing with the ANOVA technique is that although we are testing to see whether the means of samples are different, we do not actually test the means, but rather the variance of samples, hence the name analysis of variances. Here's how it works. Let's take these three samples. Each of these samples have a mean, right? And each of these samples, of course, have their own variance. We can also calculate the mean of all of the values of the three samples. This is called the great mean. The first variance we can see is the difference between each sample mean and the great mean. Indeed, in this case, only the second sample mean, the yellow one, is equal to the great mean. This variability is called the between group variance. I'll show you later how to calculate it, but here is the symbol for the between group variance. It's basically the symbol for the variance to which we add a sub b. The second variance we can see is called the within group variance. This variance shows how each individual value found in all of the samples vary according to the great mean. So to calculate this variance, we must take each value in the blue sample, each value in the yellow sample, and each value in the red sample, and check each of these values to the great mean. This is the symbol for the within group variance. So again, it's the symbol for the variance to which we add sub w for within. Okay, but how can this tell us whether or not our means are equal? Let's check it out. The statistic we use for this test is the F statistic, but calculated this time by dividing the between group variance by the within group variance. Here are two different situations with only two samples each. We will assume for the demonstration that the great mean is equal for both cases and that the n values are the same for both cases too. Just by looking at these, we would have a tendency to think the means might be considered equal in case 2, whereas they would be significantly different in case 1. Let's start with the within group variances. Remember, that's the variance for all the values of all the samples in respect to the great mean. Take a look at the two extremities of both examples. They are equally lined up at each side. Also, we know that both great means are equal. As such, the within group variances will be equal even if each sample is more stretched out for the second case. The between group variance is quite different though. You can see in the first case that there is a certain distance between the sample means and the great mean versus in the second case that difference is much much smaller. For the sake of example, let's fix fake numbers to these. Our denominators, which are the within group variances, are equal. So let's say that they are equal to 10. Our numerators, the between group variances, are not equal though. We've determined that case 1 has a higher between group variance, so let's accept the values as being so. So the respective f's are of 8 and 2. Don't worry if you don't get why the numerator is higher. It comes from how they're calculated, which we will see later. Recall what the f distribution looks like. It starts at zero because we can't get negative variance values. Higher differences in variances locate us higher in the distribution. Our f value of eight for case one would be located maybe here versus the f value of two for case two. So by using the f distribution, we can determine whether or not our means are equal, but by using the variances. You might be telling yourself, well, this sucks. Why can't I just use the z or the t test? The thing is, the more samples you have, the more t or z test you will have to do because they can only account for two means at a time. For example, if you have three samples, you will have to do three t tests. 
Indeed, you have to compare the means between sample 1 and 2, between samples 2 and 3, and between samples 1 and 3. If you have 5 samples, well, the number of tests gets up to 10. If you had 10 samples, you would have to do 45 tests. So if you want to do so many tests, please feel free to go ahead, but it might be simpler to simply do the ANOVA technique.